This channel is for educational purposes only. Uh, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investments. Um, and there is inherent risk in trading. So it's speculative. Uh, just make sure you keep that in mind. Hi, this is Joe. We're going to talk about the market today. I want to give a full update. And I also want to talk about an indicator that I think is really important, uh, but I don't always talk about. So uh, I want to make sure I cover that for at least a few minutes uh, later in this video. Uh, but let's get started in the uh, market conditions. And I want to just cover these to make sure we're uh, following up on a weekly basis and know where things are situated. Um, I'm going to go into the trend and the momentum in uh, in a little bit. Uh, slight deterioration uh, overall there, uh, but you know the fact of the matter is uh, we're starting to see a little bit of selling. Um, I actually think that's a positive thing. Um, but as we start to look at the volatility, we're now above a flat moving average, which is still considered neutral. But it's going to work its way. We look over here on the right, you can see the average true range is starting to grow again. Um, that's based on the fact that these last three bars, daily bars, are uh, significantly bigger than all these bars prior to it. And that's what causes its average true range to go up. And, it, and when volatility is going up, that means risk is uh, risk levels are elevated. And so we just want to be aware of that. Uh, if we get this moving average rising back to the upside, then you know that this part of the indicator will actually turn completely negative. Um, the overbought, oversold oscillator has pulled back. We can see that uh, we've worked our way back down. And actually, um, when I completed this, uh, <laughs> I did this uh, a little bit before uh, the market had actually closed. But uh, the fact is, is that uh, we're we're in the low 50s now. Um, but we do have divergence in place. So we've made three lower peaks uh, here as the market has tried to push higher. And now with this bar, this kind of selling bar, I think this increases the odds that we want to go and test this prior low. This divergence in place is telling me, look at the prior low for support somewhere around the 3,700, maybe 3,650 uh, should probably be the target area that we're looking for um, based on the current action. Uh, the sentiment numbers are 38. So this is why I don't use this number as a timing tool. It is a, uh, it, it's a secondary indicator, but it is very important. This was a, this was a very high level. It was in the 40s, even got up, uh, actually, I think it got right up into the 48 area or something like that. And so we're always looking for price to confirm. Um, but the fact is, we're starting to see a little bit more bearishness, a few few less bulls out there. And I think that's a good sign. We want to see this drop down into the mid to low 30s as we start to approach support. So that's kind of what we're looking for is, um, you know, a move back down into this oversold condition, maybe closer to 30, 35 on the overbought oversold oscillator, um, and then uh, have the sentiment number drop back down. Uh, the only thing we have to worry about is this volatility level growing. And uh, as we look at the NASDAQ, when we get into the NASDAQ, I'll talk about that a little bit more. So uh, let's go straight into the, uh, the charts now uh, and look at the trend and momentum conditions. Um, so as I've said, probably making everyone sick over and over again, that this had gotten a little stretched away. Uh, from the 18 month line, the trend on the monthly is still positive. So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm looking at this as a positive trend that's overbought. I mean, we're pretty far away from this line. So that increases the odds that, um, you know, again, that I think we want to come into the, the uh, on the weekly chart, come into the 18 week line. Um, the momentum conditions are okay. MACD is still uh, positive. Uh, and so is the ADX. Um, I am seeing a little bit. It looks like the, the MACD line wants to cross back down below its signal line. It's really close. It hasn't done it yet, but uh, we might see that. And I did notice that green DI made a lower peak. Even though price made a higher high, the green DI actually made a lower peak and the red DI made a higher low. So I'm starting to see a little bit of contraction forming, and that might mean, and that increases the odds that we're going to 
try and go and test the support again somewhere around the 3600 to 3700 area and again i think that's a positive we don't we don't want to see this thing run away to the upside and get farther and farther away from the 18 month line because i think that's a huge negative um daily chart has taken a little bit of a blow here because um it, it still has this 18 and 40 rising, but if you notice what happened, it tried to kind of turn at the 40 and get back above. But now, after today's action, I think there's a pretty good chance we're going to break both of these lines. I think if we take out, um, you know, on Friday, today, on Friday, if we take out this bar from Thursday to the downside, then I think you have to consider this trend negative now. And then you start looking at that prior support area and, uh, you know, you can draw in again, somewhere around 3650 to 3700 is where support comes in on this time frame. Uh, but we have MACD sort of turned down and, and there's really not a lot of good uh, momentum conditions. And that's been the case for a while. Um, let's take a quick look at the uh, hourly chart because uh, we talked about putting on, I had put on the puts here uh, way back in here and we started to see some some resolution and then we got a pretty big drop, but it was so quick. Uh, you know, I, it, sometimes, you know, the timing isn't perfect and uh, you miss your opportunities. I was actually on client calls and stuff. I missed this kind of really good opportunity to take some profits in this trade. But the reality is that this was not put on for a short trade to make money to the downside. It was more of an insurance policy against the longs. And I want to make sure you understand the difference. If I'm trading and I put this trade on and I'm looking to make money, I don't have any longs on and I'm looking to make money, then I want to be scaling out of the position, probably on this drop, maybe on this drop, but definitely on this big spike down, uh, especially because we were coming in support at the 40 day moving average. Uh, now we got another rise up. And then if you notice, and I want to show something uh, on the on the spider on the hourly. And I want to talk about this indicator because I, I talk about price. I talk about MACD. I talk about the ADX. And I've gotten some questions about uh, on on volume. And volume is, is very important to me. I mean, if I had to strip everything off the chart and look at price and volume, I'd be fine. I'd be totally fine because the volume bars really do help uh, give you an indication of the strength of the moves. And when I see a down leg, I want to see expanding volume. And when I see a rally up, uh, you know, on a positive basis, if I'm looking for something positive, I want to see expanding volume to the upside. If we notice what happened here on this drop down, we had a big spike in red. That's the selling volume. And then on the way back up, notice how light the volume was, especially at the peak here, Leading up to this peak up in here, the volume was really light. So we had heavy selling volume and then light volume back coming back up. That really increased the odds that we were going to come back down and test. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And if you notice, look at the size of the volume bars on this sell off to the downside. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to go ahead and break through, maybe even break through the 380 area and test a little bit lower, just based on the fact that this volume pattern is definitely negative. So wanted to make sure I covered that. I haven't done that in the past, but just trust me, volume plays an important role in what I look at. Basically, when I'm looking at the S&P, I don't really have volume. And the other thing is, is uh, I don't really have room on my charts when I have all the charts up to have all the indicators up. So I take volume off the chart, but I don't want to mislead anyone into thinking that I don't think it's important. I'll spend a little bit more time in future videos telling you how I really like to use volume and how uh, specifically uh, it can be a really great timing tool. Um, let's go ahead and look at the QQQ. And this is just, again, a more uh, extreme version of what has taken place in the S&P because it's farther away. It's more extended on the monthly chart. Um, it, it had the same decent pattern on the, on the weekly chart. But if you notice what's taking place here, the MACD is actually on the weekly chart is actually crossing back down below its signal line. And we have a little bit of divergence now uh, that is somewhat confirmed based on that. So that tells me that this this support from the 18 week moving average could 
could be in question. I mean, we have to respect this right now around 309 and a half, something like that, especially because that coincides with this last breakout area. So we want to see how it reacts there. But don't be surprised if it flies through this 18 and goes all the way down to the 40, just based on the fact that we have gotten some signs of a little bit of momentum loss. Green DI not really confirming the last few legs here. And so we do want to keep that, uh, keep an eye on that. Um, also recognize, and I'm going to zoom in on the daily chart. Notice how red DI has broken out above all of these prior green and red peaks. And we have a little bit of volume expansion here. So um, again, I think that does increase the chances that we are going to um, make a pretty firm test here. And it might not hold the 18 week. Uh, with more room left, if we look at the S&P again, we have more room left to the downside uh, to correct. So I think we have to leave this open as a possibility. I'm not telling you that it's Definitely going to break the 18 week, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's how this plays out just based on what's taking place and the volume expansion just over the last couple of days. Uh, quickly, the uh, hourly chart. This was actually the trade, whether you're hedging or whether you're putting on an, uh, uh, puts or shorting the QQQ was really a better trade. Uh, looking at it in hindsight, you know, maybe there were some signs based on the fact that it was more extended than the S&P. You know, we probably would have, could have and would have made more money uh, playing those puts. Uh, but, you know, you can't look at things in hindsight. You got to play with what you had. And we really like the pattern on the spider. Um, clearly, they really wanted out of these big growth names. Uh, that hasn't been the case, but uh, these big, heavy mega cap stocks have taken a little bit of a hit here. Uh, and so we have to, you know, that's part of uh, the conditions that you have to take into mind. That's it's part of uh, what I would call the um, uh, tape changing somewhat. Uh, starting to see some kind of ugly red bars. And uh, I just think that's important to keep in mind. Even though I don't put it in the conditions, you do want to keep that in uh, in mind. So uh, that's our update for the week. Uh, please uh, post any questions or comments that you might have and give me a like, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.